Every day I'd stare at this unattractive metal laptop stand and think to myself, I should really make something nicer. So today I'm going to show you how I made this leather and wood laptop stand to replace it. Let's get to it. I started by ripping down a piece of half inch plywood on my table saw into three pieces, two sides and the top. I've always been a fan of the angles on the piece Bad Larry by Chris Salamone of the channel 4 Eyes. So for the shape of the stand, I decided to take inspiration from it by flipping the design upside down and cutting off the legs and the top to get the slightly bowed leg look. None of the measurements needed to be anything specific, so I just cut the sides and the top to what I thought would look good. I wanted the stand to have a slight decline from the back to the front, so I cut the side pieces about a half an inch taller in the back. I don't have a tapering jig, so I simply screwed a scrap piece of wood at an angle on my crosscut sled to cut the side tapers. This also allowed me to get the exact same angles on both pieces without having to worry too much about precision measuring. Next, to achieve the bad Larry angles where the side pieces meet the top, I set my blade angle to 37.5 degrees, which I got from watching Chris's videos. Now because I'd already cut the taper, the piece wouldn't run through the saw straight, so I realized I'd have to temporarily reattach the cutoffs to the side pieces. To do this, I used the blue tape and super glue trick. You simply put a piece of blue tape on each edge you want to attach, put some super glue along the edge, hit the other edge with some accelerator, and then attach them. Then, once you've made the cut, you simply pull the two pieces apart and remove the tape. Since the sides will be at an angle, to get them to sit flush on the desktop, I needed to cut the bottom edges at a 15 degree angle. And then for the top, I again cut a 37.5 degree angle at each end. With all the pieces cut, I brought them all back to the workshop for glue up. I couldn't figure out a good way of clamping all the pieces together, so I used a combination of blue tape, wood glue for strength, and super glue to hold everything together while the wood glue dried. Since the only thing this stand will be supporting is my laptop, this joint should be plenty strong enough. Once everything dried, I removed the tape and cleaned up any glue squeeze out with my X-Acto. There were some small gaps along the edge, so I ran the edge of a screwdriver across them to close up the seam. Next, I moved on to making the template for the leather top. I started by covering the stand with craft paper, and I tried to cover as much of it as possible with one piece. Then, wherever there was a part uncovered, I added another piece, taped it to the large piece, and then trimmed everything to size. Once I was happy with the template, I moved on to transferring it onto the leather. To do this, I used my Tandy Leather Marking Pen to trace the template outline onto the leather. I used my rotary cutter to cut the straight edges, and then my trusty X-Acto for the non-straight edges. Since the craft paper is much thinner than the leather, I made sure to leave a little extra material and then trimmed the leather to the final length once it was on the piece. I wanted to add some decorative stitching to the leather, so I started by using my wing dividers to score a stitch line. Then I used my pricking irons to punch the stitching holes. To ensure the spacing between each hole stays consistent as I work my way down the line, I always make sure to place the stitching chisel point furthest to the left in the last hole of the previous set of holes I punched. I made a video dedicated to leather stitching where I go in depth into the process of how to do this saddle stitch as well as others and I'll leave a link above if you want to check it out. But at a high level, what I found easiest is to just pick a sequence and then stick to that. For example, I always start using the right needle to stitch from the back and then stitch the left needle from the front into the same hole but in front and under the right needle's thread. If you continue this sequence, you'll get a very nice looking stitch pattern in my experience. All right guys, we are making great progress. The platform is built, the leather is ready to be put on there, but I had a couple last minute additions I wanted to add. Uh, one of them I already started and that's this face plate. So even though the slope is pretty gradual, I wanted to add this face plate with a little bit of a lift to keep make sure that the laptop doesn't slide off the front. I don't think it would anyways, but I figured why not add that. 
Uh, the next one is, I realize I need some way of uh, creating air circulation underneath the laptop where the fan is. So I think what I'm gonna do is simply glue a couple pieces of leather on the back here before I cover, the, cover it with leather. And that will just raise it up, the back up, just enough to add some uh, air circulation underneath. I'm not sure if it's enough, I'm sure you'll let me know in the comments if it's not. And then finally, I always lose my cords when I unplug my laptop and they fall behind the desk and everything like that. So I'm gonna figure out some way of mounting this, uh, the cords to the back here. Uh, I'm not quite sure how I'm gonna do that yet, but we'll figure something out. Let's get to it. For the faceplate, I simply traced the front of the stand onto some eighth inch plywood and then sketched a little extra lip at the top. I then used my bandsaw to cut out the shape, making sure to leave a little extra material that I could flush up later with a router. To add a little more detail and style to the faceplate, I decided to attach some really nice curly maple veneer to the front. Once the glue had dried, I again used my X-Acto to trim off the excess veneer. Next, I glued the faceplate to the front of the stand, making sure that all the edges had a little overhang. Once everything dried, I used my router and a flush trim bit to get rid of the faceplate's excess overhang. With the faceplate mounted, I moved on to sanding and finishing it. I sanded it up to 320 grit, popped the grain with a little water, and then sanded it one last time before finish. To finish the faceplate, I went with Maker Brand Simple Finish with Wax, which is, as the name would suggest, a super simple finish to apply and leaves a really nice natural finish. To apply it, you simply wipe it on, wait 15 minutes or so, and then wipe off the excess. While that was drying, I moved on to figuring out some way to keep my cords from falling down behind the desk when I disconnected my laptop. I remember seeing something on Pinterest a while back where they used a strip of leather folded like an accordion to create a cord holder, so I thought I'd give it a try. I started by gluing one end of the leather to the end of a piece of scrap wood. Then I would make a loop in the leather and secure the next side of the loop to the wood with some glue and a small tack. The multiple loops secured tightly side by side create just enough pressure to sandwich the cord between them and prevent it from falling out. Next, I moved on to adding a couple pieces of leather to the back of the top to elevate the laptop and provide some airflow under the laptop. These will be hidden once I cover the whole stand with leather, which is what I moved on to next. To attach the leather to the stand, I used some Tandy Leather Eco Weld Adhesive. I added some to both the leather and the wood, and then once the adhesive was tacky, I simply pressed the two pieces together. I worked my way from one side to the other, making sure that everything was lined up and pressed down as I went. With the leather attached, the only thing left was to attach the cord holder to the back. Finally, I added some strips of leather to the bottom of the stand to protect the desk, and also some to the cord holder wood to make it look a little more finished. And just like that, it was ready to be tested out. If you enjoyed this video, please consider hitting that subscribe and bell button. I also post a lot of behind the scenes and smaller scale projects as Ethan Carter Designs on Instagram and would love to have you follow me there as well. And with that, the stand was done.